Okay, good morning everyone and yes, I will try my best to make this short. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, no worries. Uh, the title for today is called Families and Christ and the passage is from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 to chapter 6 verse 4. But this is your homework to read it at home. Okay, so I'll kind of pass through because it's a lot. Um, the first part talks about how wives should be obeying the uh, husband, um, just like how Christ loves, oh no, actually I'm talking about husbands now. Uh, wives should um, obey and, and respect husband, and husbands should love the wife as, wife, um, as how Christ loved church. Um, and then the next part talks about, it continues to talk about how Christ, our Jesus Christ, loved church all the way to his death, right? Um, and it's just like becoming one flesh, like how Christ and church is one, uh, husband and wife become one. And then it talks about how children, you should obey your parents in the Lord. We'll talk more about that. So family, when we think about family, I know we all have different types of family, even in our school. Um, but usually we think of mom, dad, children, or mom and child, dad and child, or children, or brothers, sisters, maybe grandparents and a child, or children. You know, we all look different. We all have different family, but we still have family. That's how you came out you know <laughs> right <laughs> you didn't just drop from the sky or you know korean people say as a joke no i just picked you up from the under the bridge <laughs> but that's of course not true and you guys uh, came because you have your parents um, well we cannot talk too much about our families because there will be how many families from here so we will focus on the families in the bible and who would be the first family in the bible so easy Raise your hand. I know Brandon usually raises his hand first, and yes, Brandon. Adam, Adam and Eve, of course, yay! And that is uh, from Genesis, right? You guys all know Genesis 1 1. Ready, go. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, you, got, you were confused because I showed that. Okay, Genesis 1 1. Okay, ready, go. In the beginning. Yes, thank you. And whenever I somehow in class, I say in the beginning and then they say, uh, look at the beginning and then they say, God created. <laughs> so anyways, right, um, in Genesis 1.1, it says that God created everything, right? But the most important is, of course, people that he made in his own image, right? And I, uh, look at this picture. <laughs> I just drew that yesterday. <laughs> I know it's really childish, but, but um, because whenever I search for Adam and Eve on the Google, it's like they are all naked and all that so I just thought I'll just draw yeah. but you know you know Adam and Eve right they were the first people um, and of course in the Bible we learned I know all of you learned that it doesn't just go very pretty right even though they are the people that God made as the first people they sin and all of that right and there's children not so lovely Cain and Abel you know kill brother and all of that but we're not focusing on that today uh, so that's how it starts then what about the next family in the Bible in Genesis who do you think yes Abraham I will talk about him but before him we have somebody so famous that you guys always learn about da -da -da -da. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Daniel! Noah! Noah. <laughs> okay, so you guys always learn about Noah. Children, right? We always talk about Noah. And, um, and what did he do? You all know he built the ark, right? Like the song. But why am I talking about him? Because it says in the Bible, what does it say? This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, uh, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Noah and th uh, had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? Um, and you know how the whole family went into the ark but no one else, right? And I know I'm not gonna focus on Noah because it's gonna take an hour, but um, what's important about Noah's family is that even though people were laughing at them, you know, God said, Noah, you should build the ark. And it looked so foolish, right? From the people's point of view, I'm sure, right? Um, they were like, why are you doing this? Why are you building this, right? But this was God's will and call for them, so they 
uh, they were obeying God, right? And, and as the Bible says, Noah uh, was faithful, and not only him, but the whole family went into the ark with the animals, right? So then, just like Eden said, we want to go to Abraham. Actually, before Abraham, his name was Abram, right? And uh, I think most of you also know about the story of Abraham and how he had a baby when he was how old? As it says, 99 years old. Yes, he had, who's his wife? Sarah. Her name also changed, right? It was Sarah, and then it changed to Sarah. And, and what's important about Abraham is that he says, God says, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Same kind of expression, right? How Noah was explained. God says to Abraham, you know, you should walk with me and you should be blameless. You should be faithful. You should follow me. That is the family that I want. And I will give you many, many babies. That's what God said, right? Because Abraham said, when God first called Abraham, Abraham said, I have no child. What do you mean? I cannot, you know, be the father of nation. That's what God said. You will be the father of nation. But he said, I have no child. But later he said, look at the sky, you know, look at the stars. Stars. I'll give you know numerous number of babies and, and children after you and that's how it became actually if you read Bible right and you learn from Sunday school right so we see these godly families godly, godly men who start families um, and to us oh, oh I have a picture yes <laughs> cute picture okay so we have these uh, Abraham and Sarah and Isaac, right? And of course, even there are a lot more stories in the Old Testament. Um, we're just thinking back to um, how godly family, families were formed, right? And of course, in the Bible, if you read on, you find, as I said, even Adam and Eve, their family wasn't perfect, and it continues. You find a lot of fights, a lot of killings, a lot of hates, hatred, everything happening in these families even though we say godly family right because people are not perfect but through this line who came do you guys know through this line of abraham all the way to david if you read bible there are many passages where it says the father uh the the abraham and the son whoever and the son whoever you know it just continues genealogy we call it yeah you guys learned uh, old old uh, older kids did you? Did you? Yeah. So some, some people say, why, why do we have to read through all these names, right? But, but it is important because it goes all the way to who? Jesus, of course, right? The main character of our Bible, right? Jesus Christ, right? Um, and I just wanted to just focus on that because when Jesus says, this is actually not from the Old Testament. I, it is actually part is from the Old Testament. This is from where, actually? From the ten commandments right in the ten commandments which is actually from old testament now paul is writing to people in ephesians um, uh, meaning that uh, he was writing to the people of church in ephesus and he was telling them you know wives should do this and husbands should do this you know families should be like this if you're a godly family if you want to be family in christ this is how you do this is how you follow and obey and let's read this ready go Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Okay, so does this mean... Um, I mean, of course, you have to obey your parents. Does that mean if your parents say, die, you die? <laughs> of course it does. I mean, I'm not trying to be extreme, but, but of course, there are things. It's not, your parents aren't perfect either. I'm a parent too, but I'm not perfect, right? Um, and I can even say things that hurt my child, maybe, even though I don't want that, right? Because we're not perfect. But at the same time, still, God says in the Bible very clearly, obey your parents, right? Whatever they say, however they're treating you, you respect, right? Respect your parents. That's what God is teaching us today, right? Um, and I sometimes actually somebody asks me, what if my parent is not a Christian? You know, maybe my parent says, don't go to church. There have been actually some friends of mine or some people that I knew that 
family wasn't Christian, and, and the, only the child was Christian, um, and, and they were actually, actually persecuted, if you know what that word means, right? There were families like that too, and maybe even here, you know, who knows? But, um, but even so, you know, Jesus, remember Jesus, how Jesus was a child of Mary and Joseph, but Jesus was also God himself, right? So, but still, God says the same thing, obey your parents and respect your parents, right? Jesus did respect his parents as well. So um, this is one thing I want you to take home with you to obey your parents, meaning respect and love them. But at the same time, it also says very important thing to parents. It says, do not provoke your children in anger, to anger, right? Of course, we have a few parents here, but um, that's what we also learn because sometimes it's, it's very hard to not be angry at our children. <laughs> Sometimes it is very natural to be angry because they don't listen. But still, God says, don't, you know, have them be exasperated or be angry at you because you're treating them wrong, right? We should be teaching them in the right direction, but at the same time, we should be loving them and respecting them too. Now, am I talking only about our family like that? We have many different children, many different families, and I actually want to close with this as the title of today's sermon. It says, Families in Christ. So what I mean is not only like your mom and dad and your siblings, but we have many different families in Christ. So in, you know, in the Bible and in uh, Korean, we always say like brothers and sisters, 형제님, 자매님, did you ever hear that? Yeah, these days we don't do that as much, I think, but um, that's how we called each other. Because even in the Bible, we say uh, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Through Jesus' blood, we're all family. Yeah, even though you don't have the same parents as I do, but, but we're all under Christ's love, right? Under God, right? So we say we are families in Christ. And I brought the picture of JCS. Juniper Christian School. I know uh, not all of you are here because this is from last year. Um, but we are also family, did you know? And what, uh, some of my students who are younger, they asked me, I said, you guys are family. Why aren't you loving each other? You're like brother and sister. And they're like, no, I have different parents. <laughs> they're not my brother and sister. But I always say, you know, we are um, family in Christ. Even though we are not one church here, but still we are called to be a community. And we, we can call big family, right? One family. So I want you to, I know you're trying to find yourself, but <laughs> I want you to remember um, as we spend May, the month of May, there are many days like Children's Day, uh, Parents' Day, um, Teacher's Day. There are many days that we can celebrate to celebrate each other, right? So I want you to go back to think that we are... <laughs> You're all looking for yourself. Uh, we are one family in Christ, so that as you spend the day at school, I know sometimes you spend more time here at school than your house, right? So please always remember that and, and pray for each other. And I know it's not easy, because I actually have a lot of counseling with your parents, especially when you're younger, because we have such a small number of kids, and it's like a family, but you're not a family. You have different parents, so it is very hard. It's hard to love, I know, even with your own sibling, but even with the people that you meet at school. Sometimes you love, sometimes you hate, and it is very hard to come to that middle point of really deeply loving, right? Because we're all different, but still God calls us today saying, you know, you are family in me. You should love, you should care, you should really pray for each other and care for each other. And of course, you obey your parents, love your own siblings at your home, but also let's love each other here at school. Uh, Juniper Christian community, let's be a family together. Okay, let's pray.